Hello, everyone. Welcome to Monday's episode of the Daily Sip. I hope you had a good longer weekend. It was a bit weird with uh, extremely hot weather in England, followed by quite cold and windy weather yesterday. It was a bit one extreme to the other, but I had a really lovely rest and feel rejuvenated. And I'm excited today to have Mark Esho from Access Rating as well as other ventures. So thanks for joining me, Mark. Oh, you're you're welcome. Thanks for having me on your program. Cool. And I know you've been watching uh, some of the other episodes and getting involved from the chat side. It's been great, actually, to see how many regulars have come along and the the kind of conversations we've had. What what have you thought in sort of from a viewer spectator perspective? Well, well, I think it's been fantastic because it's a, you know, you've had a diversity and a a range of different talkers, so which has been great. Um, I've tried to obviously try to obviously try to uh, join each one, but yeah. sometimes at twelve o'clock I've got a meeting or you know work kind of. Sure, uh, of yeah, course. So, so, but yeah, but but overall, I think it's been um, wonderful. Yeah, uh, thank you for that. And the feedback's been nice that you know people coming on have a chance to share what they're up to, like we're going to get into in a minute. But I Absolutely. think you know people have sat with a bit of lunch or a cup of tea, and it's like a a way of seeing the big picture around disability and you know that if you think about how there's so many complex elements but when you see how it fits together that that simplifying is quite helpful as well very much so no, i completely agree with you yeah we've got someone you might know who's already oh, commented. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get more into access rating soon and we've got gavin saying great to have you on mark which oh, super. Is and he's a big fan of access rating and what you're doing so fantastic good to hear that but yeah g- give us a kick off mate just a couple of minutes of sure. a bit about you and what you've been up to and then we'll, we'll have okay. a go um, okay i'll try to sum it up born in leicester um caught poly at the age of five right um initially paralyzed from the neck down gradually recovered um went to nigeria I was about 10 came back when i was 18 um went to university where did you go when you were 10 sorry uh, to Nigeria. Nigeria, yeah. Yeah, okay. I went to Nigeria when I was 10 because my yeah. parents were from Nigeria. So I was there for right. about eight years, um, worst eight years of my life. But anyway, we can, you know, that's, that's a slightly different story. Uh, yeah. yeah, then came back to, to the UK, um, went to uni, got a master's degree in, um, in business administration. Nice. Worked initially uh, as an accountant, as, an, as, as a finance manager, uh, but due to the late effects of polio, um, you know, I, um, I, I, I had to give up my job. So I was basically unemployed, unemployable. Uh, look, was looking for something to do and almost by default really you know because the internet's always been one of my hobbies yeah. I then uh, went up to set up my uh, first internet venture which is like a right move sort of website called um, Houses Online so mm-hmm. I taught myself a bit of web design and um, got it out there and it flopped because it was this, this was in 2000 way before it's time lost all my money so not only was i unemployable i was also broke at the same time and i was thinking to like okay what do i do now you know the the shit has really hit the fan so um, yeah so so i started to look at ways in which i could actually um, promote um houses online and that's when i went into digital marketing right Um, you know i i i found out that i didn't knack for it uh, especially seo uh, so I ended up setting up one of the first SEO agencies in the UK. And um, I've worked for uh, the co-op Guardian, Amstrad, actually quite a lot of big brands I've worked for. Mm-hmm. Um, then in 2004, I branched out, set up my second company, Easy Internet Solutions, which is a web person provider, which is now based in Bournemouth. I set that one up, offering free hosting. We're one of the largest free hosting providers in the UK. Um, I've set up a of other ventures since then, another company called Tiercom. Um, I've been actively involved in the government's disability confidence campaign. I got invited to meet David Cameron. Um, recently set up access rating. Wow. Yes. That's a good... which, yeah, so that's it. Yeah, that, that's it's a very brief summary. Yeah, no, thank you. Well done, because it you know there's a lot you've done and uh, a lot of things we're gonna go into more depth. That's just a nice framing of you know your your background for the viewers to, to follow. Um, so sort of going into that, the job and entrepreneurship side of things. So like when you were looking for job, was there any 
discrimination from employers because of disability or was it more that you just didn't have the right skills for the the types of jobs for having a disability uh, i think it was the opposite. Yeah, 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 yeah i hear what you say i think it was the opposite um was for me in terms of the fact that um i was overqualified right um, for a lot of the jobs that i was actually applying for oh, yeah because my parents said to me that um, in order to level the playing field that i need to have a really good education yeah. So I thought to myself, okay, if I've if, if I've got a master's degree, people take me seriously. Yeah. <laughs> but they didn't. Because wow. again, you know, I was well, I was also qualified, you know, I I I was applying for accountants roles, um, assistant accountant roles, uh, ended up working as an accounts clerk, but even trying to get a job as an accounts clerk was hard, uh, because I basically had a master's degree, so which didn't help. Uh yeah. so yeah, so getting a job after graduating was hard was really really hard so I, I ended up volunteering so you know so I did a bit of voluntary work used that on my CV and eventually a large charity actually gave me a chance as a finance manager okay. and that's where the bulk of my kind of work experience came from yeah yeah you know, I've said a couple of times on the interviews with other guests that I got my I've got a master's in marketing so mm -hmm similar you know um level of education and similar topic yes. to you and then my first job was with a disability charity and i you know i think for all the ups and downs of what disability charities have tried to address Absolutely. that you know where they have had those initiatives of trying to employ more disabled people is fantastic because it just gives people like you and i that that work experience and that chance to get a bit of a break with it already. Well, 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 well it does, because uh, one of the biggest excuses is that you don't have enough experience. Yeah, and how but do you get experience? You know, how do you get experience if actually no one gives you a chance? So you haven't got the chance to prove yourself, have you? So, so basically going down the voluntary route, yeah. um, you know, is a massive, massive bonus. It's a massive help. Yeah, yeah. So, and then you hear quite a lot about disabled people turning to entrepreneurship because the sort of... Yeah being your own boss is, you know, the flexibility, the don't have to worry if you're working maybe. What were you working from home when you were starting up those businesses? Yeah, yeah, I was, I, I, I was, I was essentially just working from my bedroom. So I had, um, so I had a small bedroom and I had my yeah. laptop, it was actually a computer PC there. Sure. And, that, and that's essentially, that's where I kind of um, actually started my journey. And I didn't yeah. leave that bedroom for at least four years. Um, yeah. I, after, after two years, I couldn't afford it to have got offices. Uh, but I'm always believing keeping your overheads low. So, yeah. you know, so so working from home actually just meant that you know I didn't have to you know I didn't have the overheads of um of, of an office. Yeah, we've been you know having a disability, in particularly a, a physical disability. Obviously, it negates the 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 obstacles, shall we say, of some offices. So you know, generally, there's a lot of people that have said, "Oh, I, I wanted to be my own boss for all those mm -hmm. kind of reasons." I think I'm partly wary to say to individuals you know make sure you do want to be an entrepreneur it's not always simple and straightforward and That's some true. people are just built and happier to be in employment so i think on a societal level mm. we have to make sure that all jobs are inclusive so that people aren't becoming entrepreneurs because it's like the only way out but i also can see mm. there are a lot of benefits to that and it sounds like for you some of those were very you know authentically genuinely true for what your sort of path went on to do um so when you set up that first business I mean, what were some of the the, the challenges and like where did the idea come from as well uh well the idea well i as i said i was looking to market um, um houses online so yeah. i started to um learn seo search engine optimization so I managed to get houses online to the top of the search engines. Uh, but then, as I said, the concept was way before its time. So yeah. then I had a choice. I could either do web design or I could go into SEO. I chose SEO. It was the road less troubled. is a bit more risky because no one knew about SEO. Yeah, then. Yeah. But I know it's had the, um, you know, the potential future uptake, the, the biggest uptake. Like yeah. If SEO takes off and if businesses start to embrace it, is you know we could turn it into a very profitable business, which I ended up doing. So and just to be clear for anyone watching that's you know not as 
involved in that world. It's basically if you go to a search engine like Google yes. and you type in whatever you know, accessible holiday, yes. the websites that are optimized for accessible holiday are going to come up higher on that search result, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right. And that's what I managed to do with access ratings. So we're now on the first page within three months. Well done. Um, but, but, but yeah, but one of the, so going back to your question, biggest challenge, first of all, was, was money because I was broke. Right. Uh, so I had to use a credit card. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's one of my stories is that I built up a, you know, my business just using a credit card, wow. an access credit card. That's so no, no angel investors, no venture no, capitalists, no, 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 no bank no, loans. No. Yeah. Nothing, no money from friends or family. I went to the bank, the bank turned me down. Yeah. And um, and what I did was, in order to pitch for business, I contacted four companies and I said to them that I will get you to the top of the search engines, but just give me a testimonial. Right. So you built up the free time. stuff. Sorry? You sort of built up case studies by doing it for free, yeah? Absolutely. I did it for free just to get those case studies, get those testimonials. Yeah. Then quick with those testimonials, I then contacted another um, uh, another four businesses. I, but this time I said, I'll get you to the top of the search changes, don't, but don't pay me till I get results. And that's how, then that's how it all started. And within those three years of doing no placement, no fee SEO, because basically there's no risk to the business, mm. only one person defaulted in that time. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really, really clever strategy, right? Because when people go out, they've got a great idea. Absolutely. Yeah, they, most of the time they're able to deliver on the idea. Sometimes they're maybe a bit overzealous in their capabilities. But either yeah. way, mm. if you're the business, like you don't want to spend much money, like particularly lots of money, but even a little bit of money when you're not sure what you're going to get for it, right? No, no, you're absolutely right. And, and again, with, with any business, you know, you've, you've got to find creative solutions because that's yeah. what business is about. But business is about problem solving. Absolutely. You know, it's not to actually go into business. You're an entrepreneur yourself. You actually know how hard it is. So, you, you, so you're constantly firefighting. And as a result, you have to come up with these creative solutions. And also, when business then becomes very competitive, mm. how do you then stand out from your competitors? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool. So yeah, like I mean, I don't know if there's any other thoughts you've got around mm. the sort of prior businesses. Um, you know, there's millions of advice that I think you could give to to people watching. But I do. Yeah. I'm keen to get into access rating in more depth as well. Sure. Um, and I mean, I suppose yeah, just a general thought. Like you mentioned your first business, but like you're obviously a serial entrepreneur now. So yeah. just a couple of thoughts on you know how come you went on to do more businesses, what were the sort of reasons that took you to do more? Well, the reason I set up um, the web hosting business, so basically web hosting is that if you create a website, you need some physical service spe uh, service space to put it on. Yeah, yeah. I noticed back in it's about 2002, 2003, a lot of my customers were getting ripped off. They were paying a thousand pounds, two thousand pounds a year for web hosting. Mm. And then I had a uh, reseller account with a web hosting provider. And I knew that I was paid about 500 pounds a year Mm -hmm. for that reseller account and i could host up to about 100 sites on it yeah so i started to invite my customers to come and host with me Got so it. i said i'm supposed to pay a thousand pounds you know could come over to me for 200 quid yeah you know so and that, and still that's made like, a profit, right? I, I still made a profit what i needed was two of them to come over to make you know to break even yeah. so um so i started yeah and, and that's how it started so i then looked at the hosting market i thought to myself okay i'm not going to be another web hosting provider i want to do something different yeah and um, so back then there was one hosting provider in the us and used to have a free hosting but what they used to do is put a banner on your website right. so I, I turned it on its head and actually did it without the banner but uh -huh. i basically said you can have databases you can have emails you can have everything you want but the number of visits to your websites will, will have to be limited yeah yeah so basically the bandwidth was limited yeah. And even up to now, you know, we've been going now for 14 years, um, that, that business. It's actually more, a bit more than that, so it's about 16 years. Wow. Um, 16 years, sorry. Um, oh, we've, slow, we've, eh? we've still got people who are actually hosting with us completely free of charge. Wow, yeah. Because they've just got hobby sites that's just sitting there. So it's always been that problem solving and knowing where you can 
charge what the customer's happy to pay, but you still make a profit, right? Absolutely. It's a loss leading business model. A lot, not a lot of people understand it. So, if you, yeah. you know, in the beginning, everyone would say, oh, you're going to fail. That's, but that, that's, that's a really stupid idea. But it's a, yeah. loss leading, it's a loss leading business model. And you've written a book as well, right? Yes, I wrote a book. I was to my book behind me called I Can, I Will. Um, cool. it was, it was, I wrote it about, about 2018, beginning of 2018. Okay. Uh, became a bestseller on Amazon. Um, right. It's basically just charts my life story from, from you know, from the beginning. Yeah. Um, obviously, with my to, 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 to where my parents actually came to the UK uh, to, um, to to where I basically was in 2018. Brilliant. So yeah, everyone watch it. Where where can they get that? Where yeah, can you get the book on Amazon? Amazon. Uh, you, yeah. yeah, you can get the book on Amazon. It's called I Can I Will, or you can just go to this vanity URL. I will order now dot com. Cool. Thank you for that. Yeah, it's a good good one for people to have a read of. Do, do you go into some of the the entrepreneurial side through that as well? Oh yeah. Well, well yeah. I go through my complete journey. Uh, yeah, basically, I, you know, I go through how you know how I did it, why I did it. Uh, I then go. I then go on to some of my other businesses as well that I've developed. I've got. I I, I set up another company called Tiercom. I haven't mentioned that. And uh, and basically, what Tiercom was was basically because I like to dabble. I'm always into one thing or the other. Yeah. yeah. So I set up one of the first uh, disabled dating websites called Access oh, yeah. Rating. So so. I'm not, sorry. What does Access Rating? I've got Access Rating. <laughs> It's quite. We're it's getting called, there. We will get it's there. Called, it's called. It's called Cupid Calls. So uh -huh. I said about Cupid Calls, and I had a friend of mine manage it for me, and um, it was it was actually quite popular back then. But again, because of time pressures, I couldn't really follow through with it. Yeah. Um. I've had a um. I've, I've had a um, children's designer website, sex and designer clothes for children. Um. There, there, there was a lady in the local paper that was going out of business, so I went to a shop. And I bought that. I bought everything she had and put it online. And I called it poshkids.co.uk a year later. And I basically sold it all for a profit. Wow, no. Nice. I bought the website basically as like an e commerce version. So I've got so I've lots of things like that. Yeah, that yeah. I'm actually doing within that company. Yeah, serial, serial entrepreneur. That's cool. Absolutely. Always up to something. Yeah, yeah. No, too. Right? Well, there's a lot, lot out in the world to sort out and problems to solve, there right? Is, there is, mate. There is. Yeah. Lots of ways to make money. So, um, Disability confident, and then we're going to get Ooh. right into access rating. Sure, sure. Well, well I was um, I, 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 I had a phone call. This is I think it was back in 2013, and I got a phone call basically saying David Cameron would like to meet me, like to invite me to the launch of the disability disability confident the campaign. Prime Minister, right? Yes, yeah. yeah the, David Cameron, the Prime Minister, and yeah. I thought it was a joke. You know, I thought it was a rubble. Yeah, 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 you made that a joke. <laughs> but um, no, it was actually, um, yeah, it, it, it was a genuine invite. Uh, so I went to London. Um, they put me up at the Novotel Hotel in uh, Westminster. So I was there. And then the, the day of the launch, I was actually one of three disabled entrepreneurs invited to meet him, to have a personal talk talk with him. So we're there wow. for like 45 minutes explaining our journey, you know, our, our journey, our experiences, because yeah. he, he ha he's, he, he's got a vested interest in disability. Because one of his children is actually disabled. Yeah. So, so one of his children, but but but, but I think that that child died. Uh, so it was actually very receptive to what we're saying, yeah. and was, and it was completely behind the disability confidence campaign. So and that's how I got involved. Um, so since then, I've given talks to, to with MPs. I've been to um, I, um, I, 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 I've been basically all over the place giving talks. Um, I, I, I work closely with the DWP, so every year I give about three or four talks with the DWP to small businesses on 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 the merits and benefit or, be, or the benefits of actually employing disabled people. Yeah, no, that's great. I mean, there's a I don't want to get into the politics because I think there were there were some policies that went around on around then that weren't so compassionate to some Absolutely. parts of disabled people and you know that mark like i i, I know you're yeah. you get that too but i think yeah on a on a personal level it's amazing that you were recognized by the prime minister of the country for all Absolutely. the work you've done and um yeah i'm sure like with his lived experience he he was in tune with the challenges that that go on and uh yeah, yeah. You're absolutely right. He was interested because he and Duncan Smith were there, and um, he, you know, he completely blanked us. 
Right, wow. <laughs> you know, and you actually know how controversial his, his, um, his policies were. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then. But yeah, he's an um, yeah, interesting guy. But anyway, we're not going to... We're not going to yeah, go. We'll, we'll but, but, but yeah, congratulations for that. For that, and I'm disability confident. It is about getting more businesses to to be confident, obviously in disability. But like looking at employment and inclusion and across the border businesses. So yeah, it's awesome that you could help them raise awareness of that that's important awesome. initiative. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's about. Yeah. And, and so then, like, how did? Oh, sorry, sorry, go on. No, go on, go on. No, I, I say it's all about being that positive role model as well. Yes. Uh, because a lot of employers actually see disabled people as a pot potential liability. Yeah. And obviously it's about dispelling those myths that, listen, disabled people actually can be highly functional and actually yeah. can add value to your business. Well, and this is the, you know, one one or two more thoughts on it, but this is the, the difficulty of um, the sort of constantly looking around the welfare benefits, which mm. has to be there, like, if people cannot work and unable to get work, there has to be a safety net. But Absolutely. when that narrative is always talked about, society only sees disabled people as needing welfare and benefits. And as you're saying, when you sort of change the narrative that lots of disabled people can work and are very skilled, that's going to be a great thing for everybody involved. So, Absolutely, because... Um... When you, I think back in 2013, I don't know what the stats are, but there's a over 100,000 um, self-employed disabled people in the UK. Right. Yeah, yeah there's, there's an awful lot of self-employed disabled people. Yeah. Um, so, you know, so it goes to show that where, the, where, where there's a will, there's a way. So you can get off those benefits, you know, and you can actually just do, actually do something where yeah. you can actually, you know, be, be obviously having a, a positive contribution to society. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So how, I mean, I presume, obviously you talked about the other businesses that weren't of a disability nature, but you are a disabled entrepreneur and That's you right. had that disability confident involvement. So what kind of went on to create Access Rating? Well, Access Rating was, um, I met with Rich at, at the pub because he- It was on, on yeah, the show. He was in my life, sorry? He was on the show a couple of weeks ago, That's right? right? Yes, yeah. and, and, and he said he had this idea, and then he said, we're going to come down to the pub for, for, for a drink, and I said, best oh, yeah. Best place for it. Exactly, that is the best place for it, absolutely, the best place to actually set up a business. Yeah. <laughs> Be creative, like, you know, over a few pints. Yeah. And he said he had this idea of actually creating a website, and because he said, look at the hygiene rates, he's got all these places of hygiene rates, why can't we create something uh, for, um, um, you know, for disability? Yeah, and and I said, well, I'd done something similar because I set up something called Guide to Access about four or five years ago. Right, and um, I actually spoke to your partner Shreen about it back then. Yeah, uh, this this was the beginning of a combable. Yeah, and um, and I knew how difficult it was just to just to do that on mm -hmm. a website, and also we went international as well. Yeah, but anyway, quite a long story short, I actually knew that it wasn't going to work that well on a website, so yeah. I said, why don't we create an app? And that's how the whole concept came about. Mm -hmm. And then we then think to ourselves, oh, you know, should we be a limited company or should we actually be a social enterprise? And then we mm -hmm. said, listen, let's be a social enterprise. So any money that we then generate can actually then go back into helping the community. Yeah. Uh, one of the things we do is that um, we've partnered with a special needs uh, school called Ashfield. I mm -hmm. actually went to Ashfield as a child myself. Right. Um, you know, and we, uh, you know, and we provide job coaching. So uh, Richard is actually very instrumental in that because mm -hmm. he's um, he's the uh, enterprise advisor for that school. And uh, but now we've seen that more and more. Just before the kind of lockdown, we, we, more and more people actually wanted to get involved in that as well. Other businesses wanted to get involved in that. Yeah. Uh, and also we provide access audits as well. So there's a commercial arm to what we're doing at the same time. So mm -hmm. I think for, for you know as a um, as a social enterprise, you know, I think we've got it covered. So it's not just about the app, but we're also giving back with, with that with the job coaching. But then there's a commercial um, arm to it in that we can actually offer access audits because what, what one of our partners, Jig, is is an access auditor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So the the revenue is from the access audits, right? Uh, the, the, the revenue the revenue is that's a good question. The, re, the re, revenue is going from the access audits. 
But yeah. the app monetization, because we've done some research as to how much we can actually monetize the app for. Okay. And it is quite a lot of money. Yeah. Because when you obviously I don't want to give away all our plans. Sure, no, no. Uh, but um, but but you know that that we we we've been talking to some organisations who are potentially interested in, in what we're doing. Yeah, was that sort of like a sponsorship type thing? Yeah, it's going to be sponsorship. You know, there's the, you know there's various ways. You know, you know think of Trustpilot for instance. Think think of Trip, uh, TripAdvisor and then merge yeah. the two together. You know, yeah, there's yeah, lots yeah. of ways in which we can monetize the app. So, you know, just as you said, so it's all about the numbers and I think we'll get there. Yeah, yeah. And how are you sort of, I mean, how easy was it making the app, first of all? Was, was that oh, right. okay in the process? Well, well, I had an advantage, obviously, having an internet yeah. on this. I was so, going to say, you got a bit of background in that. Yeah, I had lots of background, so, so I knew how to manage these projects. Uh, but the app, the app development was a lot more difficult than I anticipated. Mm. Um, it was a lot more complex than I, than I anticipated. Um, we didn't actually get the final version of our app to the night we actually had an official launch, mm -hmm. uh, but then it, it wasn't exactly ready. So since the uh, since the seventh of February, we've had three major updates since then. Okay. So we're continuously updating the app. So not only was it complex, it was very expensive as well. What, what sort of things do you have to update? I mean, look, I'm not taking you back. Well, that's a good question. It's basically what, what, what we've had to do is that, um, like, for instance, the first version did, didn't have geolocation. Right, okay, yeah. And a lot of people were going on and actually saying, oh, you, you know, there's nothing showing up near me. Mm. So, uh, so that was a major update. So we had to put in geolocation. Yeah. Uh, and then the usability as well, as people started to use it. We, we yeah, you get feedback. Absolutely, we're getting feedback. So we updated the interface as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then uh, also the way the database works in the in the back end, that's been updated significantly as well. Yeah, yeah, got, yeah. So there's lots going on in the background. There's sort of like features of the app. There's um, the kind of database side and then the kind of usability as well. It's Yeah, it's not the easiest thing to do. It's not easy. Yeah, yeah. It's, been, it's, it's been quite stressful at times. And how's it been? I mean, you said there was like an official launch how, how has it been received by disabled people uh, i think it is it's, it, it, it's been relatively good yeah um what we need to do is, is obviously is to create that brand awareness uh because people think oh you know what you know why do we need access rating when we've got ewan's guide but ewan's guide as you know that's just a website you know it, it they haven't gone up and they look accessible as well accessible is great but again they're slightly different because they're not user-led yeah, uh, you know, we're the only we're the only um, uh, kind of organisation that's got an app whereby it's completely user led. Yeah. And when you then you know, then we think of our, our, our future plans is that you know we, we're starting to look at version three of our app, and we're going to have the top ten most accessible uh, bars, hotels, and restaurants across the country. Good idea. You, yeah. know, you know, so all these we've got all these plans in place. And so, do, do businesses have like apart from the access audit? Do they have to do anything to be on the app, or are the businesses already there? The business is already there. We've got it's a data the rating that you need, right? Yeah, absolutely. We, yeah, we, we're, although we say it's a hundred thousand, technically it's actually two hundred thousand that we've got. So we've got almost every single. I'd say we've probably got about ninety-eight percent of the bars, hotels, and, and, and restaurants across the country. Right. And then so does the the user is the one that obviously gives the rating yeah so just just talk us through yeah. like if i so if i want to download it right what, what would i do well to, to actually download it you can go to the app store uh, yeah. or, or go to google play yeah uh, you then download it you put it on your phone or tablet uh, whatever device you're kind of using mobile device that you're using mm -hmm. and you can actually use it without registering so you can actually see what um you know the places that are close to you so it'll give you 10 places um that basically buy hotel restaurants are actually close to you um, whether they have a review or not right whether, thank you whether they're I'm about to say that whether they've got yeah, a review yeah. or not uh you can also search for places as well mm -hmm. uh but to in order to actually add a review then you need to sign in yeah. so once you then sign in that gives you the option to actually actually add a review so you can actually rate uh, or you can actually rate and also add a comment as well so there's like a comment box 
that you can add as well. Also, if you can't find the um, venue, you can actually su you can actually su suggest a venue at the same that's time. Yeah. Uh, you can upvote or downvote. So let's say, for instance, you, you know, uh, do, you know, you put in a review, and um, you know, I don't agree with it. I can actually upvote or downvote it. So therefore, what what we will then do as the administrators actually go and actually investigate, and actually say, okay, you know, why did you upvote it or, or why did you downvote it, for instance? Uh, that's a really good. Uh, and, yeah, and then yeah. there's a um, there's a script in the back whereby if 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 a organization receives two or three um, poor reviews it will then send us an alert so therefore we then obviously what we'll then do is contact, contact them try to say listen you, you receive these poor reviews uh, is mm. there anything we can do to help you we've got a question about the business side i'll come to in a second sure, no one thing i wanted to just ask about on the community side sure. is obviously like different disabilities have different access needs so does well how that like, is there a way of knowing if it's voted for different types of disabilities uh, that's, that's not a good question uh, it does say at the moment we we i won't say we're limited but we just focus focusing on physical uh, physical access uh, i'm glad you said like so it's it's clearly for a certain use case but Obviously, you can do other use cases down the road, right? You, you can. You're absolutely right. So at the moment, it's, it's kind of is limited to, um, to, to to physical, but we are looking to expand it. Yeah. Uh, you know. So as I said, you know, we've got lots of updates coming up. Um, obviously, we're going to probably need a good bit of funding to do it because, as yeah. I said, it's been privately funded today. But my partners, uh, Rich and Jig. They put their life savers into it, so yeah. you know, so it's a, you know it's a big commitment on our on, on their part and pressure on me to make sure it works. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, um, that's probably a good um, point. Uh, yeah, there's no reason that we not mention it, but it's a good time to say oh, I've come on board yes. um, as a partner with because of that sort of ambassadorial road. Absolutely. And as I always say on the daily tip, it's a level playing field. Like I want everyone to come on who has stuff. To talk about but it's especially lovely when it's something that i'm more involved in and just to like get the message out to people so yeah obviously we're going to be doing some sort of influencer marketing type work together as well yeah, yeah i appreciate that no it's, it's, been, it's been it's a bit it's been a real pleasure having you on board so sure, um, that's been again you know you, you know with your experience of a comable um you know that experience and also your network is going to be invaluable to us yeah i mean i think you know we all get the big numbers of disabled people and the potential business opportunities that like let's be honest we all are in it to make change as well so it's like that social enterprise model is perfect really it is. but it's been for what for a number of different reasons there are challenges to pulling off this kind of thing and you said like with a comable shrin and i had to really go through the mill and you know get in like we we got angel investors and that i don't know of many or any other disabled entrepreneurs that got there that isn't. level of investment because people just didn't see disabled people as customers quite frankly yeah. but as that changes and with technology mm -hmm. there are more opportunities like with access rating but it's it's a it's a slug because you you're trying to get disabled people to embrace and use the app and you want businesses to embrace and use the app, right? I know. It's um it's it's between like a rock and a hard place. And yeah. it is it is exceptionally hard. Uh but you know, I've done you know, for, for me, you know, this is something that isn't new to me. Um, you know, I'm up for the challenge. I've got fantastic business partners. Um, you, you know, they've got a very similar work ethic to what I've got. You know, we're gonna slug at this seven days a week to make sure it works. Yeah, and, you know, and we're going to find creative solutions. You know, we're not going to give up. Give up on this. You know, right. it's not. It's not a sprint. It, it, it's it, it's a marathon. It's like your other businesses as well. You said it's problem solving, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I wanted to just double clarify something that when you were talking about physical, when we were talking about the the use cases, you meant physical disability, right? Like sort of that that access of someone with like a wheelchair is that what you mean yeah it's actually someone like a wheelchair you know so basically what we're looking at is you know we're looking at uh, if they've got like automatic doors if they've got like a disabled toilet uh parking uh is there is there room to move around um uh, it's mainly focusing 
Oh, started there. See if we can remove stream and add stream. See if we can get Mark back. It's always the beauty of when uh, when tech fails, eh? I was really enjoying that. It's been a really good. Are you back there, Mark? Yeah, sorry. That's um, right. You got out for a minute, but we got you back now. Yeah, my VPN was playing up. Sure. I think we're okay now. <laughs> yeah, we're okay. Um, yeah, what were you saying there? Just the, the last point. Uh, right. Right. Can you still see me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. Okay. It's, it's kind of gone on my screen, which is fine, which, which, which is not a problem. Okay, I can see myself at the bottom now. So, so sorry, which, which, point, which point did I get to? Because I got, <laughs> I got completely distracted with my connection going down. My spanning. <laughs> I think the overall thing was around the sort of phys the physical disability being the use case. Absolutely, that that that's what we kind of kind of focusing on at this moment in time because there's just so many disabilities. Um, you know, is that if you look ourselves, say Jake, myself, and Rich, um, you know, ah, uh, no, I lost him again. <laughs> Having a nightmare. Oh, he's completely gone. Oh, well, um, we'll give a couple of minutes. I'll do a bit of a filler, maybe a bit of a dance, maybe a bit of a jig. I think he's coming back now. I'm back again. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I was going to say, my, my connection is normally stable. I've got, you know, I've got a BT connection. <laughs> anyway, I'm back now. So, yeah, I was, I was just saying, you know, with, you know, there's just so many diff um, different disabilities and even people basically the same people with wheelchair users. Of course. You, you know, so it, it's very, very hard to cater for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. I think we'll, we'll move on from that point. So Chris was asking, um, where are we? It's jumping around now. What has been the interest from the business community? To what, how has that been? Or is that a bit of a later step once the app's more ready and there's more users. Well, we've been we've been lucky because I've got lots of uh, business connections um, already, and we launched at a at at, the, at a large event at the King Power Stadium, and right. we got access rating to I think it was an audience of about three hundred people, and most of those were businesses. And um, since the launch, we've had lots of people contacting us, um, people offering us to access audits. So um, the um, the interest from the business community has actually been, is, has been exceptional. What's cool. kind of held us back has been obviously has been the lockdown. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I think, um, you know, Rich touched a lot on the lockdown and relating to access rating. So we maybe don't have to go as in depth as some of the other interviews, but like, yeah. Even on a personal level, I mean, how how has it been for you? But also a couple of points for access rating as well. It, it, yeah, well, well for, for me personally, it hasn't been too bad because um, as, as a company, half of our staff work from home uh, because okay. we started the, you know, because again, because we're a disability confident employer, when we advertise, we advertise on a national basis. So therefore, we're actually looking to, you know, we're looking to encourage disabled people to actually work for us. Like we've got people that may basically work from home. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, so, that, so therefore, you know, stuff like that. So for us, so, so the transition for us as a, as an, for, for me, um, was relatively straightforward. I yeah, but for the app, it's, it's massive, right? Exactly. So I just work from home five days a week now as opposed to uh, anything else. Yeah. I mean... We sort of touched on it with Rich, but like for the app, I mean, can people watching, you know, they could still download it and and rate some places they've been to. Oh, absolutely! Park, right? you're, you're, you're absolutely right there. You know, that, and and that's what we're hoping for because sometimes yeah. people say, "Oh, you know, I'll download the app once everything opens," but we need those ratings now. Yeah, because we can then collect that data and further develop the app. So therefore, we, you know, we want to be in a position in a year's time whereby we've got the top, top 10 most accessible bars and restaurants across the country. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. We've got a question from Jessica. So I know Jessica um, in off, you know, offline as well as online. So I know that Jessica's in Australia. So just the context of her question. Yeah. From your knowledge so far, do you know whether there are similar access rating review platforms across the globe and how do they compare to access rating so you sort of mentioned newens guide and access able but are you aware of any others more globally yeah there's access advisor 
Um, yeah. The Advances Advisor, that's the website. That's also a good site as well. Um, in terms of apps, I'm not sure. Um, I, you know, I probably have to do a bit of my research, but we couldn't actually find anything. If anyone knows of anything else, let, let us know. Uh, but we couldn't find anything that focuses mainly on the hospitality sector within the UK. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no, that's cool. Uh, I, think, I think maybe Jessica to have a look back at the replay because you did touch on, you know, more of the sort of differences with the ones you knew of um, earlier in the interview. Maybe Jessica came a little bit later on. But, you know, at the end of the day, that and that, again, this was something that Rich and I touched on when he was on the show, that there's always space for healthy competition anyway right like that it's good to just drive each other forward to, to keep being bigger and better and innovate and disrupt and all that kind of stuff and i think you know in the end you 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 get someone that really finds the the golden ingredient but then there's nothing to stop there being a bit of merger acquisition sort of all working together for the same cause as well so yeah. I think there's opportunities. Absolutely, there's always opportunities. You know, I, I operate my businesses in, a, in the two most competitive sectors, digital marketing and web hosting. Yeah. And we're always having to be creative, come up with new offerings. And, and sometimes you're right, especially on the web hosting side, you, you, know, we, we, you know, we're always looking to merge or to, to acquire other providers it's to, through acquisitions. So therefore, that's how you build up that synergy. Yeah. Yeah, so I was just looking on LinkedIn because the LinkedIn comments don't come up on, uh, okay, sure, on the, nice. the software. Um, someone called Pippa, I think Pippa's going to be on the show this week or next week. It's been mad. I've got bookings in for the next two weeks. Wow, there. that's awesome. Yeah, it's been um, yeah, really, really going down well on the guest side. But yeah, Pippa was just saying she agrees with your points earlier about work experience and voluntary mm. roles. And she was saying that there's maybe a need for more work from home sort of intern voluntary work experience roles because normally it's always in the office because you're sort of shadowing someone That's but lovely. there's the potential now you just be on the zoom calls with that person to to shadow them as well right absolutely no no i, you know, I completely agree and that and, and for us as an organization that is something that we you know that we've always kind of um, done ourselves yeah. In terms of the fact that we've actually offered work experience for people, especially disabled people, sometimes one week, two weeks. And um, and again, for access rating, that is part and parcel in terms of what we're looking to do is that we're looking to offer work experience to disabled, uh, well, to, 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 to young disabled people. Yeah, yeah, no, well said. We've also got um, a comment from Spencer, who I know um, has a hearing impairment, he's deaf, mm -hmm. and he's asking about subtitles on the show. So I will reply to Spencer and type so he can read it and um, thank him for, for bringing it up. I have spent bloody hours trying to work out how th this street, this um, software we're using is called StreamYard yes. and it goes to four different platforms, which has been phenomenal to get this out to a bigger audience all in one go. But there isn't a format for captions and subtitles and I've asked StreamYard. So if anyone watching and it, maybe you as well mark you might know but anyone watching has got solutions to this please get in touch because i do want it to be inclusive to everybody but I, I, I have spent so long trying to sort this it's been ridiculous i think you can actually do it on the playback oh, well that's definitely it? one way is it on youtube yeah yeah. Uh, yeah there's listen i'll send you a link to something Okay, that would be great. That, yeah, that, it basically automates the process, but the, the problem with this particular well, is great because it will also generate the captions. Yeah. Uh, but what you'll then have to do is actually actually go, what you'll have then have to do is actually go in to actually make some corrections. But that is yeah, the which way to do it. I can't do an hour's worth every day. That's the other, but, but auto generate is sufficient um, to have some captions, I think. But the problem is that like it's resources you know markets are resources I, I do an hour every day not because this is part of my job i just love doing the yeah. content um but equally yeah i want everyone to be included so it's a exactly. it's a tricky one but um I, on the replay auto generate does do the job but on the live version it, i just don't know how we can do it so. no it's exactly no you can't do it on the live version it's very no, difficult to no. do and you know when, when we're all millionaires we'll be able to Get it all captioned, no problem. Okay. But... In real time. <laughs> cool. Well, um, yeah, so a couple of in interactions like Gavin is saying, 
um, Axe SR for me included, okay. and Blue Badge Style are similar apps as well. Okay, right, okay. Yeah. Well, I've them. well, we kind of, I kind of knew about them, but... Um, it's I'm, a little I, bit different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're a bit different. They're a bit yeah. different. That's why I didn't mention them. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, anything else? I mean, I think for me it would be a bit of a look to the future. You know, I know you said obviously you're not going to give away the, the secret recipe because everyone will be doing it. But, like, what are the broader plans you've got for access rating and, and in general? Sure. Well, well, um, the broader plans is is that we would like to incorporate more uh, different venues, mm -hmm. like, for instance, sports venues, music venues. Uh, you, you know, that's going to be the next stage. We're looking to do that in the next six months. Yeah. Uh, so basically broaden the scope a bit. Um, what else are we doing? Um, as I said, we, we are looking to launch version three of the app towards the end of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, also partnerships as well. You know, these, you know, we to strategic partnerships, are, are, you know, are, are going to be critical to our success. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, looking at funders, investors. Um, so, but yeah, but in terms of our future plans, you know, that's, you know, we just want to expand it, that, you know, in, in a couple of years time. Um, it possibly looking to go international as well. Mm -hmm. uh, right. so, yeah, you know, so lots, you know, there's lots going on in terms of what we want to do and achieve. Yeah. But yeah. most importantly for us is also to actually expand our job coaching as well, because that is something I know that Richard enjoys, something I, I enjoy as well, is basically helping that younger generation and, and, and you know, and, 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 and making that critical difference. And so is that funded by the sort of profits of the some of the profits of the revenue absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. it's what well, for us at the moment it's time yeah uh, you know and we're happy to actually to actually donate our time because a lot of these young young uh, young adults no one will give them a chance no one will give them any sort of work yeah yeah years. and that's, that's what, what you mean so actually your time is that you're sort of donating an hour of your time away from the business and other pursuits to do that indeed, indeed. absolutely yeah. But, you know, but it's, 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 it's well worth it, in my opinion. Yeah, totally agree. Well, listen, is there anything else you want to mention? Do you, and maybe give, like, sort of another call to action of, what, of where to get the app and what well, to do? Well, um, as I said, you know, you, you can get the app. You can go to our website, which is accessrating.com. Mm -hmm. um, that's the, you know, and you can go uh, on the menu item where, um, where it says um, app and you can download it from there or you can go on to Google Play or you can go on to, um, on, on to the app store and you can download it from there. And Brilliant. as I was saying earlier, you know, we do need as many reviews as possible. So just yeah. because places are closed doesn't mean that you can't actually review some of your favorite places or even when you download the app, it will give you the, the you know, the, the, 10 um closest um bars or tells or restaurants close to you you know you might have visited those so why don't you just review those as well yeah yeah no, yeah it's a great call to action gavin saying about um well done you know great guests good luck with everything and yeah. um maybe have a chat about dwp so i'll let you and gavin that's on the facebook version if you want to follow up after my yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah you know have a bit of a chat about dwp um, but no, yeah, good, good luck, mate. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Show. I'm excited to, you know, see how it all uh, unravels and develops. But it's a solid, certainly a solid start. I'd also be interested in people watching who, like, have heard the calls to action but haven't downloaded the app, kind mm. of what their reasons are for not engaging. And let us know, like, is there something else you'd want to see? Is there something that worries you? Because I think the more... You and the guys know what 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 blocks people from Absolutely. doing it. You can resolve those issues so that more do get involved with it as well, right? Yeah, no, no, no. That's that that's really well said. You know, because we're always asking for feedback. Yeah, um, and it's because of the feedback that we've been getting since February, and that's why we've actually had, had three major updates to the app itself. And mm -hmm. if there's anything that's stopping people from actually downloading the app or, you know, or if the message is not coming across as to what the app's about, it'd be good if people actually just tell us, uh, you know, we've got a, you know, we've got a, a big Facebook gathering since, you know, we set it up in February and we've got over 1,200 people on there at the moment. And, you know, we engage with people every day and people say, yeah. it's great, it's great. But then some people are then not downloading the app. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, it might be worth you sticking that out on your channels as well. Just say, absolutely. like, you know, what what can we 
do that's gonna you know help your your rating be more yeah. likely to do the rating or whatever you have to frame it in the right way of course but Absolutely. you know i think that feedback is as valuable as the the other things that are going on no completely that's that's really good advice we should definitely do that cool Super. all right well yeah thanks again mark good to see you you too mate talk to you Bye. soon Thanks, everyone, for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow for the, the next episode. All right, bye for now. Okay, cheers. Bye for now.